how's it everyone? Today I'm here with my WWF Royal Rumble 1992 review. Of course, this Sunday is the Royal Rumble live on the WWE Network. And as always, for myself, I like to go back and watch previous Royal Rumbles uh, to pretty much, you know, build my excitement even more for the Royal Rumble. So uh, that's going to start here at this review, of course, for the 1992 Royal Rumble. And without further ado, let's jump right into this review with my overall thoughts on the show. Overall, I gotta say this Royal Rumble is a good show. You know, I think this uh, show, people like to go back and say it's an amazing Royal Rumble pay-per-view. But when we actually watch it from start to finish, uh, the Royal Rumble match itself really saves the show from being a terrible pay-per-view, if you ask me. Uh, the opener is good. You know, you have a big moment with Roddy Piper winning his first and only Intercontinental title. But the other two tag matches are absolutely terrible. And the, like I said, the Royal Rumble match itself really saves uh, this, from, this pay-per-view from being terrible, if you ask me. Uh, of course, you know, the Royal Rumble match itself on this pay-per-view is one of the most infamous Royal Rumbles of all time. It's arguably the greatest. You know, I think a lot of people say this one. Or 2004, 2001 are the greatest uh, Rumble matches in history. Uh, this is definitely the most iconic, if you ask me. Especially with, you know, Ric Flair going the, the whole, you know, nine yards in this match. 10 yards, whatever the phrase is, uh, you know, just the first time was for the WF Championship. Just the cast of guys in this Rumble match makes it by far probably the most star-studded Rumble match of all time as well. So uh, definitely the most iconic Rumble match, if you ask me, uh, to a good pay-per-view. Like I said, I think a lot of people call this pay-per-view great just because of the main event. But honestly, the main event is only the only thing really worth checking out on this show. So, um... This is that's just my thoughts on it, but um, yeah, just, just jump right into it. Of course, the opening match, which was the Hart Foundation taking on the Orient Express. Uh, this was a, you know a pretty solid opener. I enjoyed this. You know, Owen Hart was pretty much in this match majority of it. He was you know had a hot start, and of course, uh, Orient Express uh, quickly cut him off and just you know pretty much double teamed him for the majority of the match until Owen Hart eventually got the hot hot tag to uh, jam the Anvil Nyhart, uh, who just went you know ape shit on both guys, and eventually leading to uh, the rocket launcher from Owen Hart. Uh, for the 1-2-3 victory, so pretty solid, you know, match here uh, to open the show. We the Hart Foundation and Express. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to um, the Intercontinental Championship match between the Mountie and Roddy Piper, of course. Uh, days before this match, uh, Bret Hart defending the Intercontinental title against uh, the Mountie, which the Mountie won the Intercontinental title. So that's what set up this match with Piper here. Uh, the match itself, I thought was fun, honestly. I think Piper made this match fun. Uh, it's only about five minutes of this Piper throwing the Mountie around and, you know, Mountie getting little to no offense, but Piper just, the crowd being so behind him, made the match, if you ask me. Uh, so I enjoyed this. It was, uh, you know, it was an okay match. Piper wins the sleeper, uh, thus winning his first and only Intercontinental Championship in WWF. So definitely for that moment alone, it is worth checking this match out, so... Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And after that, we had the Bushwhackers versus the Beverly Brothers. Terrible match, um, 15 minutes of just pure, boring, you know, non-entertaining, the crowd was dead for this, this was just not good, there's Bushwhackers being stupid, and just, I didn't like this match at all, too, uh, terrible tag teams, if you ask me, and I never enjoyed any of their matches, and this is a fine example why I don't enjoy any of their work, so, terrible, uh, Beverly Brothers went with an axe ha handle, so... Don't even waste your time on that. Speaking of wasting time, we go to the WWF Tag Team Championship match between the Legion of Doom taking on the Natural Disasters. Um, I mean, better match than the previous tag match, but it's still nothing to go out of way to see. You just had a lot of shoulder blocks, no selling from LOD. Um, just a very plain and you know non uneventful tag team title match. Just not really worth your time, to be honest. And the match I didn't count on anyways. Natural, uh, Natural Disasters got in the very last second. Our Typhoon got the last... Uh, uh, got in the ring, or Typhoon, I always mispronounce his name. I uh, got in the ring the last second before the, the match ended at a double countout. So, Natural Disasters win via countout and just, um, you know, 10 minute match of just no selling and shoulder blocks and nothing really much to it besides that. So, whatever match. And then we go to the main event, of course, which was the 1992 Royal Rumble match for the vacant the WWF Championship. Like I said, the most iconic Royal Rumble match of all time. Um, just epicness here. You know, you had um, the Bulldogs at the match. As well as the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and of course, Ric Flair coming in number three after that. And now uh, this match is absolutely awesome. Like I said, this is arguably the, the greatest Royal match of all time. Just the cast of guys who had in this match, like Ric Flair, Million Dollar Man, uh, Bulldog, you know, the first three names in the match, Shawn Michaels, Macho Man Randy Savage, Hulk Hogan, Sid Justice, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, uh, The Undertaker, Big Boss Man. Like, the list just goes on. A different cast of guys in this match. Um, that make this star studded, you know, even though there's guys that you knew didn't have a chance, like the Berserker or the Repo Man or Virgil, um, it's still, they still added this match, you know, you had Hacksaw Jim Duggan, you just had several names, the entering quality was great as well, you know, you just had, um, a lot of great brawls and a lot of just, you know, 
uh, you know, it kept your interest. It kept your eyes on the match, not just like wondering, like, uh, you know, when's the match going to pick up? You always had a good name or a big name in this match, and it kept your interest, and that's one of the best parts with this Royal Rumble. You had nice exchanges, you know, of course, Savage and uh, Flair went out for a while, which was nice, which Savage, you know, accidentally botched himself by uh, eliminating himself, but they played it off because no one threw him out that he wasn't eliminated, so uh, Savage actually fucked that up a little bit. Uh, you had, you know, uh, Flair and Hogan going at it on the outside. Um, you know, he had the nice um, moment with uh, Piper getting the ring when Flair is the only guy in the ring left, and they had a nice exchange. Uh, just a lot of great stuff in this match, and of course, Ric Flair being the MVP, going the full 60 minutes in this match for number three, going all the way to the very end and winning it. Uh, Ric Flair is absolutely tremendous, and this is definitely one of his best performances, so that's one of the best uh, reasons to watch this match, it's for Ric Flair himself. Uh, but the match came down to Savage, Flair, Hogan, and Sid Justice. You know, Savage gets thrown out, uh, Hogan gets thrown out by uh, Sid Justice. Hogan pulls down Sid Justice and Flair eliminates Sid Justice to become the WWF champion. So Ric Flair is your winner of the 1992 Royal Rumble and is declared the Undisputed World Wrestling Federation champion in an iconic moment, iconic Royal Rumble match. And uh, yeah, definitely is the sole reason to check this Rumble match if you ask me. Just the in-ring in -ring quality is a lot of fun. It keeps your interest. You know, the big names are in this match as well. Um, just you, can, you can't really ask for a better Rumble match, especially in that era uh, with the, the stack, uh, stack names they had in this match. So... Definitely a great rumble, and of course, they had the math with uh, Hogan and Justice, you know, having their, um, you know, stare down and just arguing at the end, uh, after the end of the match, you know, because they both cost each other the match. And of course, you had the Ric Flair, uh, Ric Flair infamous promo about the tear in his eye um, after the match, you know, greatest moment of his life, uh, which is definitely a great add-on as well. So, um, yeah, the Royal Rumble match, like I said, definitely saves this pay-per-view from being terrible. Everything else is kind of just decent to whatever, but, you know, Ric Flair winning... And uh, oh, the Rumble match in general is just definitely the, the best reason to watch this Rumble, if you ask me. But uh, yeah, I'll do it to review, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys did, leave a like below. And until next time, I'll see you guys. And thank you guys for watching the video.